Coming up on today's show, Fiat Chrysler merges with Peugeot Citroen to become the world's fourth largest automaker. America's largest privately owned coal mining company files for bankruptcy. And Volkswagen's boss says Tesla isn't in financial trouble and isn't a niche market automaker anymore. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transport and energy. Thanks to everyone who sent me birthday wishes this week. You all rock. And thanks to, to the fourth annual Climate Exchange Carbon Raffle for sponsoring today's show. Buy a raffle ticket today at carbonraffle.org for the chance to win a brand new Tesla of your choice of up to $195,000 total value taxes included. Stick around until the end of the show and I'll tell you how to enter. And as always, I'd like to extend a thanks to the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's show. Find out how you can accelerate the electrification of transportation today by pointing a browser at electricauto.org. And finally, a shout out to our buddies over at Fully Charged Live. Come and see us at Fully Charged Live USA in February and find out how you can get discounts off your tickets at the end of this show. In a move that caught many of us in the auto industry unawares, Fiat Chrysler announced this week that it will be merging with French automaker PSA in a move that will make the resulting mega automaker the fourth largest car company in the world. The merger will see PSA and FCA continue to work independently on their own electric vehicle products, but I think the basis of this merger will allow FCA to continue to produce gas guzzling SUVs, muscle cars and pickup trucks, leveraging the fuel economy credits of the PSA family. I made an in-depth video on the merger this week, so be sure to check it out later. If it makes it into production, the European-built Lightyear One five-seat sedan will not only be one of the few cars on sale to harvest sunlight to supplement the car's electricity from its onboard battery pack, but it will also be the most aerodynamic too. Tests published this week show that the Lightyear One managed to achieve an incredible coefficient of drag of just 0.2 in the wind tunnel. This, the company claims, is a record. But I should note that both the GM EV1 and Volkswagen XL1, while no longer available, both had drag coefficients of 0.19. Still, 0.2 is very impressive. Mercedes-Benz has issued a recall on some of its brand new 2019 EQC electric SUVs. The reason? A bolt used on the front axle differential transmission in some cars may not meet, quote, durability specifications. That's usually code for someone using an incorrectly rated bolt on the production line and, says parent company Daimler, could result in a broken bolt getting lodged in the transmission. This, in turn, could cause a potential vehicle stall. Daimler did not say how many vehicles were affected, but one industry magazine has estimated around 1,700 vehicles will need to be recalled. It's no secret that digging coal out of the ground and using it to generate electricity is not only worse for the planet than using renewable energy generation methods, but now more expensive too. And this week, Murray Energy, the largest privately owned coal company in the United States, filed for bankruptcy protection. At the moment, the company, which I should note is owned by a major donor to the Republican Party, is seeking to restructure. But it is the eighth coal company in the US this year to run out of money. While I'm glad to see coal die a quick death, I really hope that those who are currently working for the company get a chance to retrain in cleaner, greener energy jobs. For a long time, industry analysts and some Tesla fans have called Tesla a small niche company. But in response to a question from a reporter at a recent event, Volkswagen's CEO, Herbert Diaz, stated that Volkswagen takes Tesla very, very seriously indeed. Quote, Tesla is not niche, he said. 
Quote, the Model 3 is a large series model and they are one of the biggest manufacturers of electric car batteries. We have a lot of respect for Tesla. It's quite a change to hear this from days of old where previous Volkswagen bosses not only scoffed but criticized Tesla's achievements. It also shows how seriously Volkswagen is finally taking EVs. The UK city of Bristol is well known for many things. The first female doctor, laughing gas, and of course, David Prose, aka Darth Vader. But it's now going to be famous for something else entirely, becoming the first UK city to ban diesel engined vehicles. Set to take place in 2021, the ban will completely remove all diesel engined vehicles from Bristol city centre. As someone who used to live there, it's where the show originated and, by the way, is where Fully Charged is also based. Yay, Bristol! Last week, just as we were preparing this show, Tesla revealed the third generation of its solar roof photovoltaic solar panel products. Unlike traditional photovoltaic solar panels, which sit on top of a roof structure, Tesla's solar roof tiles are actually the roof. When used to replace an existing roof structure, Tesla says they are cheaper than replacing the roof with standard shingle and then adding solar panels on top. But how cost effective it proves for you really does boil down to your personal situation, plus how likely it is that you're going to be able to take advantage of full tax credits for photovoltaic solar panel installations. There's a video coming on this topic next week. Continuing its drive towards fully autonomous, hands-off robotic taxis, Waymo has begun offering limited rider-only trips in Phoenix, Arizona. This isn't a fully public service yet. You will have to apply and be selected to make use of the service, as well as sign a non-disclosure agreement. But the fully robotic taxi service gets Waymo one step closer to running a fully autonomous, human-free taxi service across the US. In addition to the new program, Waymo says it's now testing fully autonomous trucks using that same autonomous driving software and hardware in collaboration with Peterbilt Trucks. Trucks will be driven in Michigan, Arizona and Georgia. Trees are important. Not only do they look beautiful, but they also help clean the air we breathe. But with global deforestation at shockingly high levels, many organisations are now working on concerted efforts to plant new trees around the world where they're needed. One such effort is in the form of team trees, which this week got a one million tree or one million dollar donation from Elon Musk. Team Trees has set itself a goal of planting 20 million trees by January 1st, 2020. And we've personally just donated 100 trees to the program. And from now on, when anyone from this channel has to fly to an event, we'll be digging deep and helping Team Trees plant even more. And now it's time for Short Shorts. Fisker Inc. has announced its upcoming SUV, the just-named Fisker Ocean, will be unveiled on January 4th, 2020. And at the same time as its unveiling of the name, the company announced the Ocean would be leased rather than sold. It will be leased using a new app-based program. Going against Ford, Volkswagen, BMW and Honda, the rest of the legacy automaker world, including Nissan, GM, FCA, Hyundai Kia and Toyota, have come out against California's zero emission rules, instead supporting the Trump administration's attempts to gut the zero emission mandate and reduce fuel economy targets. For shame. The BMW Mini Cooper SE has been priced in the US, coming in at a shade under 30,000 US dollars before incentives. Add in US federal tax credits and the mid-range plug-in will be more affordable than many other Minis, suggesting it's been priced to sell, not to sit just at the top of the range. Tesla is being sued in Germany because its website sells cars with the promise of full autonomous driving by the end of this year. Those bringing the case argue Tesla is at fault because even if the technology exists for full self-driving, the legislative process in Germany doesn't yet allow it. Volkswagen has teased a few images of the electric concept car it plans to reveal in time of the LA Auto Show in a few weeks' time. 
Most likely that will be in the form of the ID4 crossover. The concept car will be on display at the Peterson Motor Museum in LA. While Tesla's third quarter figures showed record-breaking quarters for deliveries and production, the automaker has come under scrutiny this week as its formal filings show a 39% drop in overall sales in the US. Right now, though, I'd not worry too much as the US was the first market to get Model 3 and probably will be the same for Model Y too. So it makes sense now that most people have their cars that sales would drop. Meanwhile, in China, prototype Model 3s have been spotted with what appears to be a longer wheelbase, suggesting that a long wheelbase Model 3 is on the way for Chinese customers. Long wheelbase sedans are very popular with those wealthy enough to pay for a driver to drive them around in luxury. The Tesla Model 3 is now officially on the list of approved cars that can be used as a New York City yellow taxi cab. Model 3 isn't eligible for the city's alternative fuel medallion because apparently the taxi commission didn't think of adding EVs to its list of eligible vehicles for that program. Welsh-based company River Simple says it will be introducing a limited number of Rasa lightweight hydrogen fuel cell cars on UK roads next year as part of a nationwide test fleet. While most hydrogen fuel cell cars are large and heavy, this one is super efficient due to its lightweight design. Tesla has officially installed its 2,000th supercharger station in China, showcasing yet again how important China is to its future success. Tesla's Chinese supercharger network is currently growing at an unprecedented rate, with new charging stations going in on a daily basis. Truck company Cummings has just revealed a hydrogen fuel cell Class 8 big rig at the North American Commercial Vehicle Show. While the day cab truck is designed primarily to operate on hydrogen fuel, it comes with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack for backup. There's no word on if it plugs in. Despite siding with lower emission standards in the Trump administration, GM stated this week that it will spend more on electric vehicles in the next five years than it will on its internal combustion engine vehicles. But since EVs are more expensive to develop right now, this doesn't mean that GM will be making more EVs than ICE models. Volkswagen's R&D boss this week disclosed that the company's goals of becoming a major electric automaker and challenging or at least being on par with Tesla in terms of production in just two years relies on it building two massive new factories in China. Given the market in China for EVs, this is hardly unsurprising. Porsche has been spied sending a non-camouflaged Taycan Turbo S Sport Turismo around the Nürburgring in Germany. The cross-wagon variant of the Taycan is expected to enter production in the next year or two. Sadly, I can't share video of this due to licensing restrictions. Hyundai will bring a new public autonomous vehicle ride-sharing service online in Irving, California this coming Monday. It will be open to several hundred residents of the city as well as students at the local college. Hyundai will be using all-electric, fully autonomous Kona EVs as the backbone of the service. You'd be forgiven for thinking impeachment is the only thing happening on Capitol Hill right now. But Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer proposed a new bill last week that will help Americans to swap their cars for electric ones. Those on lower incomes would get more financial assistance. The bill would apparently cost $462 billion, although there's no proposal on how to fund it. Volkswagen may only be beginning production of its ID3 this coming Monday, but this week its R&D boss outlined to Autocar the Volkswagen has plenty of planned upgrades for the model, including a hot hatch variant, more range and over-the-air updates to improve the car, much like a Tesla. Peugeot Citroen may be selling the E208, but it's admitted that it's a little worried about the future of its after-sales income, stating that its E208 service costs are about one-third that of the gasoline sibling. It says it's branching out into mobility services to secure it revenue into the future. And those are all of your short shorts. As usual, there will be more next week. The world's oceans are in quite a state. 
thanks to our collaborative addiction to plastic and inability to properly recycle the stuff. And it's led many organisations to try and clean up around the world. This week, we saw the latest in the form of the Ocean Cleanup Project, which has announced it will put interceptor vessels at the mouths of 1,000 of the world's most polluting rivers. Each interceptor vessel is fully solar powered and has onboard batteries so it can operate around the clock. Its goal? To scoop up debris from river and stopping them from polluting the oceans before they get there. It's certainly a new type of electric vehicle that I don't think we've ever covered on this channel before. And finally, the Aerial Atom is a lightweight road legal sports car that's frankly more go-kart than anything else. And it's traditionally powered by a gasoline engine, as is its crazy off-road cousin, the Aerial Nomad. But Tier 1 parts supplier Borg Warner has just taken a bog-standard Aerial Nomad and fitted it with its own electric drivetrain and battery pack in order to demonstrate its newest offerings in the EV space. The result? Well, it's an off-road, go-anywhere racer that looks absolutely stunning, goes like stink, and is 100% green. I want one. There's nothing more that I can say. I mean, it was my 40th birthday yesterday, so how about it, Borg Warner? No? Oh well. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to help us make more videos like this one and the others we've made this week, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon, feed our coffee habit, and support our LA Auto Show coverage by making a donation through Ko-fi or buying something from our swag store. Thanks, as always, to the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's News Roundup show. They've been advocating and educating the world about electric vehicles since 1967, and the Electric Auto Association believes our future depends on us all going electric today. You can find out how to become an EV educator yourself, discover a local monthly meetup, or just Find real-world EV owners to talk to about what it's like to drive on electrons by going to electricauto.org. We've been members of the EAA for some time, and we're really proud to support this fantastic nonprofit. Thanks, too, to Climate Exchange's fourth annual Carbon Raffle for sponsoring today's show. Focusing on research, media and advocacy for smart, ambitious climate and emissions reduction policies, Climate Exchange is a fantastic organisation, a 501c3, currently working with local leaders and stakeholders in more than 47 US states. And once again, they've partnered up with us to give you a chance to win the Tesla of your dreams. It's a really simple way to take part, and this year the raffle is bigger and better than ever before, with each ticket costing $250 US dollars, and the prize draw set for Valentine's Day 2020. That's February 14th, 2020. First prize is a Tesla of your choice of up to $195,000 in value, while second place will win $10,000 and third place will win $5,000. Tickets are limited, so make sure you get yours today by heading to carbonraffle.org. If you need full terms and conditions, you will find them on the company's website, but I should note here that it's only open to US residents. I'm sorry. And as promised earlier on in the show, it's Fully Charged Live's first ever US show next year on February 1st, February 2nd, 2020 in Austin, Texas. So come along and join in the fun. If you don't watch Fully Charged, you're missing out. And if you haven't attended a Fully Charged Live, it's frankly about time you do. I'll be there with our whole Transport Evolved crew, and we've got an awesome 15% discount to share with you all off your ticket price. So head to the link in the show notes and enter TE2019 in the discount window to get your 15% discount on those tickets. I'll be back next week with more great content for you all to enjoy. But until then, I hope you have a great weekend and don't forget to be better, kinder and smarter with one another. Keep evolving.